Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And hope in the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another presentation inside the word of God and praying that you are given the hope, the glory, the strength, the endurance, the perseverance, the resilience inside the word of God. Today, I want to talk about Christ distresses and long suffering the long suffering and distresses that are affiliated with Christ you come to realize that after receiving your life you must give it back to Christ. And after receiving Christ, your life is no longer your own. And you realize that when you have given your life to Jesus, you have sacrificially challenged the devil with your own life and there is rest, peace, and joy, including happiness that you are going to encounter. But also, there is long suffering and distresses which you are going to encounter in Christ, which come through the channels of afflictions and persecutions. Now, I know this sounds very complicated to you, but let us get into scriptures in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to, go, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, but God knoweth. Such one who was caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell again, but God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for any man to utter. Paul is giving a description of two different identities. He's giving descriptions of a man that was highly elevated in the things of the Spirit. A man that was elevated by the spirit of the lord to certain greater heights a man that had matured in spiritual growth a man of the realms a man that was ascended by the holy spirit to certain greater heights in the realms of the spirit a man who had unspeakable words who uttered deeper mysterious revelations like the revelator 
And then he describes one that was in yet another dimension, not of the realms of the spirit, but the one also that was in the body. The one that was just a natural man, who was not supernatural. The one that functioned in this dimension of the practical realm. And of that one, he then says, I will not glory, but rather I will glory in my own infirmities. There is one that he wants to talk about, who dwells in the deeper dimensions of the mysterious realms. And there is one that he doesn't want to glory about. Why? Because he is the man of the flesh. He is the one that represents the flesh and blood. And the one that represents the flesh and blood is the one that is associated with all the afflictions, the pain, the distresses, the long sufferings in this practical dimension. And he says, I will not glory about that one. Why? Because when I glory about that one, I can only be able to glory, but in my own infirmities. And for though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I'll say the truth. But now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he sees me to be or that he hears about me. Lest any man might end up imagining things about me, what he sees me to be, yet it is not what I appear to be. What it means is that you can function in the things of God while you have got troubles in your flesh. What it means is that you can function in the kingdom of God while you are under distresses and long sufferings. What it means is that you can be a servant of God while you are afflicted by men. What it means is that what people assume about a man of God is not what will be really happening. It's not how you, you will be really functioning. People have got an imaginary mindset, an assumption about how a man of God functions. They think that a man of God just hears the voice of God. A man of God prays. A man of God is used mightily by the Lord and enjoys the benefits. It doesn't work like that. Being a man of God is a war zone. Being a man of God is carrying burdens. Being a man of God is being prepared to carry a difficult assignment. Being a man of God is a sacrificial assignment. Being a man of God is being prepared to suffer in countless distresses and afflictions for the sake of Christ. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Lest I should be exalted above measure because of the abundance of revelations, there is an exaltation that happens through the abundance of revelations. Where you are equipped with many different dimensions of revelations by the Holy Spirit. And you have got revelations that are coming 
from different angles. You have got different diversities of revelations that come through different ranks and channels of the Spirit. And when you receive those revelations, you receive them to equip others. But when you receive those revelations, be prepared to suffer many tribulations for receiving those revelations and let me tell you this thing be prepared to suffer when you receive the gift of god why because the one that is giving you that gift the one that gave you that gift the one that is giving you all those revelations the one that is giving you all those revelations is the one that will afflict you and the reason why he will afflict you is already written in scriptures he will afflict you so that you don't get exalted above measure through the abundance of those revelations. He did the same to Job. But it was not about revelations. It was about uh, the level of upright standard, the level of blamelessness, the level of righteousness that job had reached and when he had reached that level the one that had blessed him with that gift of righteousness made sure that he must fall a bit he made sure that he must suffer certain things he made sure that he must go through certain things that were difficult for him to understand the gift of god that he had received and let me tell you that when these distresses and long sufferings are coming from Christ, there is nothing you can ever do. There is no prayer that can deliver you. There is no deliverance session. Even your mentor that you look up to will not deliver you from that. Why? Because it's not coming from the devil. What is coming from the devil is what we can cast out. But when it, when it is now coming from God, it becomes a very complicated subject. It becomes something that has been endorsed by the Almighty for the purpose not to destroy you, but to make you stronger. Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. I was given a thorn in the flesh, Apostles, uh, Paul says. A very painful one. And remember, this is the same Paul that has been talking about infirmities. There are men of God out there that are preaching. Why is it they have got uh, chronic diseases? They have got blood pressures. They have got heart problems. They've got kidney failures. They've got stroke, partial stroke. And they're still preaching. They have got meningitis. Some are HIV positive, and they are preaching the gospel. Not that Jesus cannot heal those diseases. He cannot heal those diseases, but he wants to see the strength that is inside that man of God. All those are defined as distresses and long sufferings of Christ. Christ distresses and long sufferings. They have got nothing to do with the devil. But when you look at the man of God and you don't have revelation, you assume that he has got a case or he did something against God when he didn't. All these cases you are reading here, if you came across Apostle Paul, you would have told him that you need deliverance, man of God. What is thrown in the flesh did Paul have? What troubles was Paul coming across? What challenges was the man of God encountering? And those challenges that Paul was coming across, what type of afflictions did he go through? Was he sick? Because he talks about infirmities. What kind of infirmities did he have in the flesh? What sickness? A man that could heal the sick by 
people having contact or contact with his with the aprons that were coming from his own body a man that was regarded acknowledged honored not only by the heavens even demons paul i know jesus i know demons knew him so what you thrown in the flesh what afflictions hindered paul to the level that he would say do not think of me above which i am not do not assume when you look at me to think what i am not what really was happening inside him to write all these things and what would you have said about him had he been a man of god of this generation would you have accepted that these unnecessary afflictions that are of christ would you have accepted when he told you that a messenger of satan was sent to perfect me by christ the message of satan was sent to perfect me lest i should be exalted above measure a message of satan was sent to perfect him lest he should be exalted above measure that is the only reason can you imagine you didn't commit a sin uh, most cases when you are preaching we are telling these youngsters we are telling even elderly people restrain avoid committing sin stay away from the commitments of sin why because you are going to receive afflictions you are going to come across situations uh, that are going to afflict you that's what we always warn those that we give the gospel but what about one whose afflictions are now coming from the lord what about one who, whose persecutions have been allowed by the lord what about one who's actually writing that a messenger of satan was sent to perfect me how do you address that one we've got many cases of men of god mighty prophets of old in the times of old in the old testament up until we enter the new testament different cases that encountered those that had the spirit of the lord and you would read the scriptures and yes the scripture says and the lord sought an encounter against the philistines so whatever samson did he did it not because that is what he wanted to do because you cannot tell me that one that was mightily anointed to the level of fighting against the philistines singly ended fighting with a thousand men he was able to fall into a trap of lust uh, then when you read the scripture which says and then the lord sought an encounter against the philistine you know that the lord was behind certain decisions and choices that samson did and then there is a passage i read which the disciples came across someone who was lame from birth and they were asking the lord what about this one what did he do is it his parents that sinned or it is is it the man and jesus then says it has been allowed so that the glory of the lord can be seen so that the power of god you can be witnessed meaning that jesus was simply trying to say the case that was in that particular young man had been allowed all his life so that at one specific time of his life he would receive deliverance and when he receives deliverance all glory would be given unto the lord so how many cases how many struggles how many afflictions how many challenges are you going through right now and when you enter the prayer room you are scattering you are declaring who are you declaring against the devil and the devil will be folding his hands and he is shaking his head not not in his head in a disagreement with your prayer not that the devil is to agree with your prayer but he's listening to every way that you're saying and he's saying does this person know that i've got nothing to do with what is happening to him right now yes 
I destroyed his life in certain angles, in that angle, in that area. But when it comes to this area, I've got nothing to do with all the struggles that is going through. The devil perfectly knows when the attack is coming from the Lord. Why? Because he knows the areas that he crippled in your life and the areas that is not responsible. When Job was now getting attacked, you read the scripture like the fire of God which fell from heaven. A clear scripture which needs someone who reads scriptures widest with an open mind. So that you understand that there are attacks that don't come from the devil, but when they are coming from the Lord, they are no longer attacks. They are now a language. It's now a reflection of a situation that needs interpretation. Why? Because there is no way that the Lord can attack you to destroy you. Why is you are blameless? There is no way the Lord can start fighting with you. Why is you are in his presence and you are obeying him? You are praying. You are fasting. Any affliction that can come over you, why is you are in the presence of God and you wonder where it is coming from? Why is you are praying? Just know that it is a message of Satan that has been sent by the Lord to perfect you. And then you start going through long sufferings and distresses within that specific calling that you have been given by the Lord. When you start going through those afflictions, when you start going through those difficulties, you should be able to have the mindset of revelation, discernment, when to pray about a thing, what level of knowledge to bring into that equation. If you are meant to get persecuted, I'm telling you, even if you issue an apology, it's not going to work. It's like trying to apologize to your persecutor. It's not going to work. You are going to apologize at all levels. Even if you apologize at whatever level, even if you fall down, even if you fall down, remove all your clothes to prove your submission, you do everything to prove that you have owned up even to a mistake that you have not done. Even if you roll on the mud, even if you remove your clothes and you wear sick cloth to distinguish your position of regret it will not work if it is the lord that is allowed that persecution where an apology works is when it is a human error and it is a human that is merely attacking you an apology is going to be accepted when it is the devil we don't issue any apology we fight back but when it is the lord that has allowed that trouble there is no apology that is going to be accepted you will have to go through the process of being hated you will have to go through the process of being accused falsely and you escape out of that situation at a certain specific point of time when the lord has decided to to deliver you out of that particular situation now we've got a problem with the certain believers who are praying unto the lord and they are asking the lord one and the same silly question why me why you because you are unique because you are the one who's supposed to go through that why you why me why me what what kind of a question is that who did you want that to happen to who did you want to go through that who did you expect you should go through the same situation you're going through? Whom did you expect to be in your shoes? Who else fits in your shoes? Who else do you assume must be taking the burden that you're carrying? Each man should be able to carry his cross and go through the process of pain 
as a portion inside your assignment each and every one of us were given a portion of a certain pain by the lord for his reasons to teach us endurance for this thing i besought the lord thrice that it might depart from me but rather he said unto me my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness meaning that the lord actually knew this thing was eating paul he knew that paul was having sleepless nights he knew that paul would wake up midnight and start praying he knew that paul would fast every day about this thing but he, he would make sure that this thing would not disappear he was not interested in hearing those prayers from paul probably he was actually getting annoyed why because he was wondering why is paul praying against this affliction when i gave him this affliction for my purpose i already gave him this pain this thorn in the flesh this distress this long suffering so that he doesn't get elevated above the abundance of revelations that i've given him there are struggles that you can only pray so that you grow bigger than them i'm telling you there are struggles that you cannot erase the problem is that you have got people who think we are here on earth to end all problems like the same way you delete files inside your laptop inside your computer the same way you follow up those files in the recycle bin and you just erase everything you clear everything there are people that think you can easily erase certain things you can easily deal with some situations like the way you flirt the whole day and then you just clear the charts when your wife is about to come back home it doesn't work like that there are certain struggles that we have not been promised that they are not going to stop or they are going to come across there are certain struggles that we have been promised that we will have to face them and when we face them the least that we can pray for is to accept the assignment have the ability to carry that burden without being overpowered by the pain of carrying that assignment there's no assignment that is easy in the lord every assignment comes with the distresses and long sufferings in christ and then the lord said unto paul my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore i will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may rest upon me therefore i take pleasures in infirmities in reproaches in necessities in persecutions in long sufferings in distresses for christ's sake for when i'm weak then i'm made strong paul reaches a point where he accepts his fate in christ paul reaches a point where he accepts not defeat he accepts that the works of the holy spirit they are not all about the fruits of the spirit they are also about the afflictions of the flesh they are all about endurance resilience perseverance in countless struggles that are released upon the flesh chart of god i'm here once again to, to give you yet another essential message the distresses and long sufferings of christ christ distresses and long sufferings in the name of jesus